Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the book Carrying the Fire, which was written by Michael Collins. My name is Sam Pedro, and today I'm just going to quickly review the book, summarize the book, share a few of my thoughts and feelings about the book, um, and hopefully inform you to whether or not you this is a book you would like to check out. Have you heard of the name Michael Collins? Uh, to be honest, I was not familiar with the name at all when this book came to my attention. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Michael Collins is, he's a very famous astronaut. He was the third crew member of Apollo 11, which of course was the mission which eventually landed a man on the moon. So his fellow crew members were Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. When they made it to the moon, he stayed behind and orbited the moon while Armstrong and Aldrin went down to the lunar surface. And then when they left the surface, they rendezvoused together and then returned back to the Earth. And so I think the reason why I personally wasn't really that familiar with the name is for the fact that he didn't actually go to the lunar surface. And so when you think of Apollo 11, you think of Neil Armstrong uh, walking down the ladder uh, on the lunar surface, and then Buzz Aldrin, of course, as his, his crew member uh, there. But Michael Collins, he was there the whole time, and he played a really important role. And in this book, he talks about Apollo 11. He also talks about the other mission he was a part of, which was Gemini 10, and then talks about his life and his time at NASA. So to start off, the first thing I want to say is Michael Collins, at the very beginning of the book, he says that he wrote this book <laughs> and that he didn't employ the use of a ghostwriter. Uh, he felt like this was an important story. It was his story, and it had to be done in his voice. So that meant a lot to him to write his own story. Um, and I really, I really do appreciate that. I, I do read a lot of memoirs, and I, it's not something I like to think about, or nor is it something I do think about often, is the fact that there are ghostwriters out there that sometimes when writing a memoir, uh, the, the subject of that memoir needs help forming those words and recounting those stories. Uh, so I, so it's always hard to tell what is uh, the actual subject's um, words and what is just an, a professional writer or a ghost writer. So I really like that we, there's no question here, the words of carrying the fire uh, were all from Michael Collins. And I think he kind of said that as a warning that his writing was subpar, um, kind of as a, a warning, like be careful about picking up this book. Uh, but he's actually a phenomenal writer. Uh, very entertaining. Um, he gives a lot of detail, and he's also pretty funny. He has a humor to the to this uh, to this story, and I really appreciated that. And I thought this book, as far as any astronaut or space book I've read, which I've read probably five or six of those books, um, definitely was the funniest. Um, definitely, I learned probably the most from this book as well. At the beginning of the book, he he quickly talks about his upbringing, his early life. Uh, I felt like we're very quickly <laughs> into his career in the book, and so it doesn't really spend much time with um, his early life. Uh, but then he's off, he, he joins the military, he talks about his service, some of the things he did. Uh, then he recounts um, the, the astronaut application which he takes to, to join the space program. Uh, he talks about the, the time at NASA, uh, getting ready and prepared to, to do this great thing of putting a man on the moon. And then, as I mentioned, he recounts his uh, two uh, missions that he was on, so Gemini 10 and Apollo 11. And then he gives a couple of thoughts right at the end, um, and I'll talk about that in a second. The thing I really liked, and what this book did, um, which is probably my favorite thing, is it really humanized the, the space story. And so when we think back, or at least when I personally think back uh, of that decade um, in the 1960s, just after John F. Kennedy uh, gives that goal of putting a man on the moon by the end of the decade, and then the rise of NASA and the space program, and everything that was required to eventually meet that tremendous challenge of putting a man on the moon. When I think about that, that whole decade, uh, I do think there is a little bit of the humanity stripped away. It's this great thing that he, mankind has done. It was a huge project. It required thousands of hours and um, a f that eventually led to Neil Armstrong stepping down on the moon and quoting or uh, and saying that now very famous phrase about one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. Um, 
but a lot of that humanity I feel like had been stripped away and so Michael Collins brought brought it to life because uh, at the end of the day he was going to bed uh, just like I have to go to bed he woke up just like I have to wake up every morning he went to work just like I have to go to work every morning um, and there's just you know there's these issues uh, about being a human um, and working and doing things and I really felt that in this book um, that he was just a normal person who had the opportunity to do some very tremendous things and when those opportunities came up in his life he, he grabbed them and he took it uh, he solved challenges he worked hard um, and he got to do some very amazing things and so that humanity was there um, sometimes it's just the detail he adds um, he talks about the work that he was doing leading up to Apollo 11 and he talks about the the work that everyone was doing uh, he lays out how NASA uh, strategically went about to, to land a man on the moon, how they broke it up into different sections, like this needs to happen and then this would need to happen. Um, and then, you know, a decade out, they're charting all these missions that need to happen um, and that they need to successfully do to eventually be able to reach that goal, which John F. Kennedy had set. Um, and so I really appreciated the detail and just feeling like I was there, but at the same time realizing, you know, these these were humans. These were humans with problems solving big problems. And so I really like that about the book. He also gives some character sketches of his uh, fellow astronauts and, and other workers at NASA. Um, it, that was really interesting, too. He, he goes for a few paragraphs on these people he's working with, such as Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin or Deke Slayton. And he, he kind of just gives their strengths and their weaknesses. Uh, but it was really interesting, and, and it definitely, uh, at, at that moment of after reading that, I realized, you know, uh, Michael Collins pays attention to detail, and he picks up on things, and I think that's why his this story is conveyed so well, is he, he thinks through what he's seeing and who he's interacting with and what that means. And so I, I appreciated the, the character sketches and, and write-ups he gives about um, the people he was working with. Some other highlights for me, so when he's doing Gemini 10, I won't go into too much of the details of the mission, but he is, one of the things he has to do is a spacewalk. And I, I believe he's the fourth person to ever do a spacewalk at this point. And he's talking about this task that he's performing, and he's so caught up on the task that he hardly realizes, you know, this giant <laughs> blue sphere, this orb right here, which is Earth. Uh, he's just focused on, on his task. And that was that was really interesting to me to think, you know, he was trained so well of, I need to do this, I have this checklist, I have these things to do, uh, that something, you know, like being in the vacuum of space uh, with the Earth spinning and rotating on its axis right here, uh, I, could, I hardly pay attention to that. Now, he obviously does, you know, realize the Earth's there, and I'm sure he, he remembers what that looks like. But he does kind of recount that he wished, he, you know, he had a few more minutes to just stop uh, relax and you know enjoy the view so that that was interesting to me another interesting thing is when they're at the moon uh, as I mentioned previously Armstrong and Aldrin are down on the surface while he is orbiting the earth and he talks about what that time was like and it's kind of been I, I've heard other people refer to this now as how Michael Collins was one of the most isolated humans uh, that have ever been at that moment here he was 200,000 miles from Earth, and then he's uh, <laughs> he's orbiting the moon, so the, the two closest humans are on the, on the surface of the moon, and he's just by himself. And when I've read it, they've kind of, people have kind of tried to make it poetic, like here's this lonely man, you know, this huge thing. Um, but he kind of just says, you know, he didn't think much about it. He had a mission to do, he had work to do. Uh, he was concerned about what was going on on the surface. His biggest fear, uh, which he mentioned mentions multiple times in the book is that he has that that a situation would arise which would make him have to return to the earth um, by himself uh, meaning that of course Armstrong and Aldrin got um, stranded on the moon and that was his biggest fear so the thing he was that needed to go right was that rendezvous of them coming back up off the moon and so he, sh he shares kind of shed some light on that time. It's very interesting to think about, you know, being so isolated. Uh, so I appreciated that part of the book as well. So in closing and, and the final thought was the best part of the book. Uh, well, one of the best part of the books is the, the ending 
where he's really, you know, they, they've returned back to Earth and he's just reflecting on this great thing. You know, he just participated. He was one of three participants and one of the greatest things uh, mankind had ever done, uh, technologically speaking. And in many ways, maybe uh, in any realm, uh, landing a man on the moon. And so he's reflecting on it. Uh, and it's almost like an essay where he's talking about, um, and it, it, you know, he says, you know, coming back to Earth, things were different. Um, yeah, life w went on, but like he, he realized he didn't get excited about things as much. Um, it, it was hard to be, you know, thinking about the rest of his life. <laughs> you know, I, I just I just orbited the moon. Um, so he shares some thoughts about that. He talks about Buzz Aldrin, who struggled, you know, returning back from um, that that mission. Neil Armstrong also kind of went kind of became a recluse uh, and kind of kept out of the spotlight. And so just really interesting thoughts. You know, he says how walking through, you know, uh, or going through life and there's, yeah, he's the same as humans, but there's something that will always be different. He talks about how, you know, I've seen the earth from 250 miles. I, I've seen the moon close up where it's not just this, this thing that's 200,000 miles away. Um, I've seen the sun, um, in its true light in the vacuum of space without the atmosphere um, distorting the light or anything like that. Um, some really interesting thoughts uh, he, he leaves us with at the end of the book. And it, it makes the whole book worth checking out. Um, but the whole book itself is phenomenal. Uh, I This will be one of my favorite space books I've ever read. Um, I really liked Spaceman by Mike Massimino, but I think this might be my favorite one. Um, such a historic mission and flight. Um, such a, a great person in Michael Collins who who did this great thing, uh, but but brought it, um, uh, he, you know, added that humanity to the story um, and the details that I had never really uh, had been exposed to. And so I really appreciate that. If you have any interest in astronauts in space in the Apollo program, this is a must you need to read Carrying the Fire by Michael Collins. Um, if you've read the book, let me know what stood out to you. Um, was this summary fair? Did I, was there any big things I missed? Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.